here. I'm uh, Professor Lance Hoffman, the director of the Cybersecurity Policy and Research Institute here at George Washington University. Uh, welcome on behalf of CSPRING. We are an institute at GW that facilitates interaction among faculty and students interested in cybersecurity, and we work across the university, all 10 schools within the university. Uh, you can see our, pro uh, our project material on our website. I think there is uh, material at your table where you can pick up one of those blue brochures and, and tells, us, uh, tells you a little bit about us and has our website uh, uh, URL. We have an advisory board as faculty from all 10 schools, and we try to be very eclectic and holistic in our approach to things. Uh, this is a good example of the kind of uh, uh, topic that spans actually uh, several disciplines that the university looks at. This, this seminar series is the last uh, in the academic year 2011 and 12. Uh, the next event will be, for those of you who are regulars here, September 12th, noon, <coughs> in this very same room. We don't have the topics lined up yet. They'll go up on our website uh, later this summer. All of you will be opted in to our weekly newsletter and seminar announcements if you register for this event. If you do not want to receive that, just uh, see me or uh, see any of our staff and they'll introduce themselves as we go around and introduce uh, people uh, and we'll take you off the list. We are going to video record the introductory remarks here. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to give everybody the opportunity to introduce themselves for just 10 seconds because we find that it really helps, among other people, the speakers in knowing who their audience is uh, and, and that sort of thing. You don't have to introduce yourself, okay? You can say pass if you want. Uh, but this is a public event and it is uh, video recorded and ultimately will appear on our website and on our YouTube channel <coughs> and that sort of thing. We're going to record the uh, uh, panelist talks and their uh, back and forth discussion. Um, we will not record the uh, questions and answers afterwards. Um, okay, at this point, before we go further, let me introduce the co-sponsor of, of this event. Uh, Pamela Sp Smith is the president of the Verified Voting Foundation, and they are co-sponsoring with uh, GW this event. So Pamela, come on up and say a few words. Thank you very much, Lance, and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for what we hope will be a fascinating panel discussion um, on this timely topic, Is America Ready to Vote on the Internet? and Concerns for National Security. We feel like this is timely because two-thirds of the states will be doing some form of Internet voting in their November election, um, transmitting votes over uh, public networks on systems that may be untested. Um, we want to thank our co-host, uh, Seaspree, I like uh, the way you said that, Lance, uh, here at the George Washington University. Verified Voting is a national nonprofit, and we work to safeguard elections in the digital age. We do this by working to ensure that elections are transparent and evidence-based. Um, we feel that every voter should be able to know that their vote was captured the way that they intended it, and election officials can use that evidence to demonstrate that counting is correct and accurate. So what are we talking about when we say internet voting? We're basically talking here about voted ballots being transmitted over the internet. This is whether it's coming from a voter's own PC, whether it's um, from a mobile device, whether it's by digital fax, email, online portal, or some other system such as a remote kiosk system, anything that's transmitting votes over the internet. What we're not talking about is the transmission to a voter of a blank ballot, which we strongly support because it's a very fast way to get a ballot to someone who's remotely located and may have difficulty getting their voting done in the window of opportunity that they have. We're also not talking about online registration. We've asked the question, is America ready to vote on the internet? But ready or not, uh, as I said, some votes are increasingly being transmitted over the internet and, and, and in some of the least secure ways, when they talk about email and fax, and those are, those are some unsecured public networks. Um, we'll learn from our speakers today in what way these kinds of practices will have an impact on national security. Um, you know, elections are run locally in this country, and any county which could decide an important election may be a potential target. Um, the question is, may they be able to defend against uh, attacks if they do become a target? Um, if a few hundred votes can swing 
a House race or a Senate race or even a presidential contest, uh, you know, if it's valuable enough, it will become a target, and that means it's an opportunity for destabilization. So with that, I want to thank, uh, again, all of you for coming and our esteemed panelists, and I'll turn it back over to our moderator, Lance. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Uh, there are really at least two major forces tugging at the success of new, modern electronic systems that take advantage of everything society knows about technology. Now, one of them is a desire for an easy system with convenient access for everybody, minimal administrative barriers, and allowing voters to participate in new ways to expand participation and bring people who could not or would not participate in traditional election uh, cycles. The other is the uh, growing awareness of the almost remarkable ease with which systems can be hacked from near or uh, from far. And uh, the fact that the technology uh, to fix this, there is no fix. Uh, it's not yet to find everybody's satisfaction. So in addition, uh, there are concerns about the cost, transition costs for procuring new secure systems, training the workforce, which is primarily volunteers across the United States, uh, and so all these things come into play. We plan to explore all of these today in this in this seminar. Our speakers here. Let me let me introduce our speakers. Um, to my immediate left, uh, your right is Matt Masterson. He currently serves as Deputy Elections Administrator for the Ohio Secretary of State. He is responsible for voting system certification efforts uh, by that office, including being liaison to the Ohio Board of Voting Machine Examiners. He's also in charge of Ohio's effort to develop an online voter registration database and online ballot delivery for military and overseas voters. Prior to his position in Ohio, he was de Deputy Director for the Election Assistance Commission's Voting System Testing and Certification Program. In this role, his primary responsibility was the creation of the next iteration of the Voluntary Voting System Guidelines, VBSG. Um, Next to him is Alex Halderman, who is an assistant professor of computer science and engineering at the University of Michigan. His research spans computer security and tech-centric public policy, including topics like software security, data privacy, electronic voting, and others. Uh, he helped demonstrate the first uh, electronic voting machine virus. He participated in California's top-to-bottom electronic voting review and exposed the election security flaws in India, the world's largest democracy. He recently, a couple of years ago, led a team from Michigan that hacked into, right here, into Washington, D.C.'s internet uh, trial, internet voting system. Uh, to his left is Dr. Costas Teregas, who is the Associate Director of CSPRI. I'm glad that Costas gets a chance to shine in his own light today, as opposed to uh, being with me, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, helping put these things together. Uh, Costas is an entrepreneur who has led national and international networks of government officials in the technology arena. He currently teaches graduate courses in public policy and public administration regarding the management <laughs> challenges, including cybersecurity, of public managers. He's also an interesting liaison and marketing director of CyberWatch, a network of some 90 universities and two-year community colleges dedicated to, dedicated to improving the quality and quantity of cybersecurity professionals in the workforce. Now, our format today will be uh, as follows. Each panelist is going to talk for 10 minutes. Then there'll be five or 10 minutes questions and remarks and rejoinders back and forth between the panelists. At that time, we're going to turn off the video recording uh, and uh, open it up for questions.